Hey guys, welcome back. I've been really excited about this part of the guide, and that's because today I'm going to be covering two of the things that I get asked about the most with the Game Boy Zero. And those are the cartridge reader for the SD card, and getting audio output from the Raspberry Pi Zero. And show you not only how I did it in the original Game Boy Zero, but I'll also show you a couple of different options that you have that might make it a little bit easier for you. So get out your Dremel and your soldering iron, and let's get started on part 5 of the Game Boy Zero guide. Alright, so the cartridge reader. A lot of people seem confused about what this actually does, how it works, and what it lets you do, but it's actually pretty simple. It's just a regular Game Boy cartridge, and all I did was desolder the chips on the inside, and then connect an SD card to micro SD card adapter to a combination of pads that were exposed from removing the chips and traces on here like we did the controller board, so that the card reader is connected to pins down here. So when you plug in a cartridge, the pins are connected to the fingers that you see here on the cartridge reader. So all that we have to do is connect the corresponding pins back here to the SD card test pads on the back of the Raspberry Pi Zero. So all we're really doing is extending the existing SD card reader to make it go through the cartridge reader into the cartridge to the SD card itself. Now you've got a few different options for doing the cartridge. You can do what I did and use an actual game cartridge as a starting point. It's a little bit more work, but it's cheap. This was just a couple of bucks and it came with a shell and everything. So if you're trying to do it cheap, that's the way to go. If you do go that route, please get a game that nobody really cares about very much. Like I wouldn't do that with Metroid 2 or Zelda or anything like that. You can also find boards like this. This is from a website called kitchbent.com and it's basically just a blank cartridge board. It's got these pads up here at the top that you can solder to really easily. So all you have to do is connect an SD card adapter and you're good to go. So that's really nice. It saves you a lot of work. They also sell cartridge shells like this. They come in a few different colors, and that saves you from having to use a game at all. And then like I mentioned last time, several members in the forums have been making pretty cool custom parts to use for this project. A forum member named Pre-Runner Seth sent me this, and it's basically a board similar to this one, but it already has the micro SD card slot attached to it. So that's about as easy as it gets, you just get one of these, and either an original game to take the shell from, or a shell from a place like Kitch Bent and you're good to go. And Kitchbent actually just came out with a board similar to this. So check out the description, I'll put links to Kitchbent where you can find these products, and then some forum threads where people are selling custom PCBs like this. Getting these open can be a little tricky, there's a tool that you can buy to open it. You can get them on Amazon or at Kitchbent. I have a screwdriver set that came with a bit like this, it's not really made for it, but it works. Alright, so now we're going to desolder these two chips as well as these resistors. Now it doesn't actually really matter which pins you use here at the bottom, you can just pick some of the ones up here that are easier to get to and trace them down here. And I recommend that you don't use adjacent pins but go every other one. And that's because it'll make it a lot easier to solder when we actually go to connect it to the cartridge reader. Multicolored wire is almost a necessity here so you can tell which wire is going to which pin on the SD card. Uh, you can buy a roll of this stuff for a few bucks on Amazon. Now we'll connect these wires to the pins on our SD card adapter. You may have noticed there's one extra pin on this compared to a micro SD card. That's because this pin right here is ground as well as this pin right here. So we only need one of those. Be sure to make a note of which pins you hooked up to which wires here. If you're using multicolored wires, which you should, then a good way to do that is just take a picture after you solder them up. I'm going to do something a little different for these next two pins. This is ground and this is 3.3 volts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a capacitor there. This is just a little capacitor, it's one microfarad. You'll notice that one of the legs is longer than the other. This is positive and this goes to ground. What I'm going to do is trim the legs and attach it like this. When you use a capacitor like that, it's called a decoupling capacitor and it'll help reduce the amount of noise that can be introduced to the rest of the circuit by this 3.3 volt wire. I was having some intermittent issues with my first cartridge reader. I wound up putting some shielding on the wires and it seemed to help. But from talking to forum member pre runner Seth who made this board, you really should have a capacitor attached there to help remove that interference. So big thanks to him for pointing that out to me. Now 
Now we're going to remove the cartridge connector from the board. You can try and desolder it, but I think that's going to be pretty difficult here. Or you can do what I did and just take your Dremel and cut the pins flush with the board. Now we need to match the pins on the cartridge up with the pins on the cartridge reader. You can do that by counting the pins on the cartridge and counting the pins on the reader and matching them up that way, but it's easier to just put the cartridge in the cartridge reader and then use a multimeter to test continuity between the pins on the reader and the pins on the cartridge. Okay, so I've matched up the colors of the wires that I have connected to the SD card adapter with corresponding colored wires on the cartridge reader. So that'll make it really easy for me to look at the SD card adapter and determine which wires I need to connect where on the back of the Raspberry Pi Zero. Be sure to check out the written guide that goes along with this video, there's a link to it down below. In it, I'll show you which pads on the back of your Raspberry Pi attach to which pins of your SD card adapter. Alright, so at this point, double check your wiring, and then double check it again. Take out your multimeter, make sure that there are no bridges that aren't supposed to be there. Just make as certain as you can that everything is wired correctly. When you're satisfied with that, just take an SD card that has RetroPie or something on it, plug it in, and hopefully you see something like this. Alright, now fair warning, SD cards can be really sensitive to any kind of noise or interference or anything like that. For example, in this reader that I made, I had two SD cards made by SanDisk. Same model, same capacity, same everything. In fact, I bought them at the same time. One of them works fine, one of them just refuses to boot. And I hate saying this, but I have no idea why. I think that some of them are just more tolerant to having extra wire or distance added between it and the card reader. But definitely make sure that you add the capacitor that I showed you. Play with different lengths of the wire. If you have it too long, try making it as short as you possibly can. Add shielding, those types of things. But if you still just cannot get it to work, don't forget that you still have the option to just put it in the Raspberry Pi itself. I know that this thing is awesome and it adds a lot of nostalgia factor being able to just put it into your Game Boy and have it boot up. Uh, but don't forget that it is entirely optional to have a working Game Boy Zero. To put the cartridge back together, put some tape under here just to protect it from anything coming in contact that shouldn't. And then we'll be gluing it down here cutting a little notch in the side so that we can access the micro SD card. And then on the lid, we'll also need to cut out part of this lip here so that it can actually go back together and slide in. Now, as for the label for your cartridge, I didn't really want Play Action Football as my cartridge label, so I made a custom one. All that I did was go and get some labels that you can use in your printer made by Avery. I found a template on DeviantArt for a Game Boy cartridge, I added the Raspberry Pi logo, and then a couple of these Nintendo seals down here. It printed out pretty nicely, put some packing tape over it, and rubbed all of the bubbles out of it so that it's just completely laminated. And I'm really, really happy with how it came out. It looks almost like a factory made one. So check the written guide. I'll post a link to a PSD that has uh, the Game Boy template with the Raspberry Pi logo. I'll also link out to the Deviant Art post. Another option that you have, a forum member named Dominator, I guess has access to some pretty professional printing equipment because he sent me these 
And look at that, these things are awesome. He's got a bunch of them that you can order. I'll have a link to his thread where he's selling these. And yeah, these things are fantastic. All right, now let's take a look at audio output. If you're not familiar with it, you might be a little surprised to learn that the only way to get audio out of the box with the Raspberry Pi Zero is through the HDMI port. All of the other Raspberry Pi models have a 3.5mm jack, but that's not the case here. So you've got a couple of options. One way that you can do it is turning on the alternate functions for a couple of the GPIO pins, which will give you similar audio to what you would get out of a 3.5mm jack, but you do need to add a low-pass filter to it. It's not very complicated. You'll need something like a prototyping board like we used in the last guide, in addition to a couple of capacitors and a couple of resistors. And a forum member named Helder, who made this board that I showed you last time, has made this to make it a lot easier for you. This is basically everything that I'll show you how to make by hand in this handy tiny little board here. In fact, he's working on making one of these controller boards that has this integrated onto the back of it. So definitely check out the forums. I'll put a link to it down below, but that should make your build a lot easier for you if you want to go that route. The other option that you have is a USB sound card. This one's made by Sabrent. This is one of the most popular ones that I see people using. And if you crack it open, this is what it looks like on the inside. So you can configure some stuff in Raspbian, which is what RetroPie is built on, to make it so that sound comes through the USB sound card by default. So it looks kind of bulky, but we can actually desolder this part, and we can desolder both of these jacks, so it's actually really tiny, actually a lot smaller than what we're going to be making here today. All right, so just to be clear about what we're doing here, getting audio output from the GPIO pins is as simple as just adding a couple of lines of text to your config.txt file. So that part's really easy, but you shouldn't use the signal that comes out of there as is. You need to add a low-pass filter. So that's what we're going to be making here. This has already been covered by a lot of people. Uh, Adafruit has a great guide for it. One of our forum members named SP33 has an outstanding guide for it where he's got some really clear, easy to follow diagrams. So I'm going to breeze through this kind of quickly and refer you to those if you have any questions or need further information. Also again, check out the written guide. I'll have links to all the resources that I just mentioned in addition to some resources to get you started if you decide to use USB sound instead. All right, so the components you just saw, this is how you arrange them. This is a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. This is a 270 ohm resistor. This is a 150 ohm resistor. And then this is supposed to be a 33 nanofarad capacitor. But if all that you can find is a 10, then that'll work as well. So on this board, all of these rows are connected and this pin will be connected to ground. This connects over to here. This will be our input pin from our Raspberry Pi. It'll go through here. And then this capacitor, this is the only one that orientation actually does matter. So make sure that this right here is the positive leg of that capacitor. So that'll come up here and then this will be our output. This is what'll actually go into our amplifier. So again, this is ground. This is output from the Raspberry Pi. And this is the final output that goes to our amplifier. And just to show this working, I've got it hooked up to a breadboard here. This is ground coming out of the Raspberry Pi. This purple wire is the GPIO pin that we have audio coming out of. And then we have the filtered output coming out here, going into the amplifier. These two wires are just power for the amplifier. And if you listen, that's the sound of the Quake demo running. Once you've tested and verified that it works, go ahead and cut out just the portion of the board that we're using. All right, guys, I think one more of these videos and we should be done. Next time, we'll be mounting the Raspberry Pi in the cartridge reader, adding a USB hub to connect to our Teensy and our external USB port. We'll add the power boost and hook everything up to that so we can run everything off of the battery. We'll mount the filter that we just made for our audio output and add a volume wheel, and then obviously do a lot of cleanup with our excess wire here. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time.